So in this image, we see various shapes and numbers indicating the impact angle and the difference that can have on the shape. So here I'm going to go over the blood spatter impact angle, develop a little better understanding, and also how to calculate that in some examples. So first off, the impact angle is important because the blood stain pattern study can also support um, one determining the truthfulness of reports given by the observer, target, or suspect. It can help support a potential um, explanation or can refute a potential explanation for what may have occurred at a crime scene. So the angle of impact examples, here's just some here, and we can see that the 90 degree kind of being that flat, and we're kind of increasing at 80, 70, 60, 50, all the way to like 10 degrees. So with stains that are impact angles between 75 and 90 degrees, spines and satellite stains occur all around the stain. And however, the angle of impact decreases, the spines and satellites tend to become more prevalent on one side of the stain compared to the other. And what we're seeing here in this instance is a black and white image, but you can see it tends to be darker on the lower side. That's the gravitational dense zone at the lower edge. That blood's kind of forming and collecting a little bit more at that bottom area there. As the angle of impact decreases below 40 degrees, the stain becomes much more elliptical, and the nature of outflow of the stain usually produces a single satellite stain. Now, calculating impact angle, you can kind of see the basics of it here. You want to identify the width and length is important. A calculator should be used to calculate the arc sign. Now, in a circle, the width and the length a little more arbitrary, but here we can see definitely the length and the width definitely um, are distinctly different. And it's width divided by length, um, and this is the formula. So note the direction of travel. Uh, it's a little hard when it's at 90 degrees because, quote, there is no direction of travel. Uh, but it gets a little bit harder as we, you know, either looking at an 80 or a 70 degree. Uh, but we start getting into these, you know, 10, 20, 30, um, 40s and 50s degrees. You can definitely see getting that elliptical shape. And this shows that the direction of travel. So it's going to impact here and it's going to travel in this direction, meaning wherever the tail is located, that is pointing like an arrow with the direction of travel there. So just kind of a way to kind of orient yourself. If you're not looking at a broad span image, you're just looking at an image, you can tell which way the blood was traveling. And here are the blood spatter impact angle calculation steps, the process that you want to go through. Uh, and again, it's the arc sign and width divided by length, but you first want to measure the length and width of the splatter. To divide the width of the splatter by its length, so width over length, and then determine the arc sign of the number, typically using a calculator with the arc sign function. What you're doing is you're calculating, again, that angle of impact. So here, uh, taking those same steps, what impact angle did this blood droplet hit? And the blood droplet is referring to the one here. Now, because it's on a screen, it might be able to tell, I've measured it for you, the width being 1.5 centimeters and the length being 3 centimeters. How would you go about calculating this? Well, it'd be the width divided by the length, and then you take you get that to be 0 0.5, and then what you're going to do with that number then is take the arc sign of that, and you're going to get to be 30 degrees. So this impacted at a 30 degree angle. Now if you're wondering where the arc sign is on your calculator, sometimes it is referring to that second function that you need to utilize. Um, so just be aware or learn your particular calculator and use this as an example to make sure you can get the same number. Now, a sample data set, we're looking at the distance fallen in centimeters versus volume of different um, droppers in millimeters. And we can see the distance fallen 10, 25, 50, 100 centimeters. An eyedropper produces 0 0.032 milliliters. Pipette, 0 0.045. And medicine dropper, 0 0.53. So the amount of the volume does impact um, the generally the uh, size of the droplet. Uh, but if you're keeping the at least that fairly consistent, you can use it as a source of comparison. But this is just something to keep in mind when evaluating a crime scene where you may not know the volume initially of blood that fell. Here's a data set too, finding the angle of impact. So I give you some short axis and long axis angle of impact on a sketch of the flyer, so how it may look, uh, to try to give you some idea of what these numbers might equate to or what they might look like in an image. So with that information going through now and 
can you be able to go through some practice examples? I gave you one, but now I'm giving you a little bit of a data set. So I give you five different uh, blood splatters. I want you to find the angle of impact following the blood droplet dimensions. I give you the length, the width. I want you to determine the angle of impact measured in degrees. So this would be a great time to pause the video because my next slide is going to provide you with the answers to allow you to check your work. Pause the video now. Hopefully you're calculating. And hopefully on your little scratch piece of paper, you came up with answers very similar to these. Um, so you're able to accurately be able to calculate the angle of impact given the length and width of a blood spatter.